Hey guys, what's up? Bye, Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is a Town Hall 10 live base build video. I've been wanting to do this for a while, kind of got pushed back due to some other videos I wanted to put out, but uh, here we go, Town Hall 10 base. Um, this one is, you know, kind of using the new meta that we're seeing in some of the top war clans with the offset air defenses, really trying to make it hard to use the traditional La Loon type attacks on it. So we'll do our best on this one. Um, it's been a little while since I've made a Town Hall 10 base, but um, as a Town Hall 10, I still think I know the basics, and hopefully I can make a pretty good base that you guys can either use or take the principles from, which is probably a better idea, and apply them to your own base build. Um, for Town Hall 9s, you know, it's tough out there. Uh, the last Town Hall 9 base build I did actually um, was one like the No Fly Zone 2.0, and if you guys watch Cast and Blast, he actually made a video talking about how to destroy that base with an air attack. And um, of course, any base can be three starred. Good job to him and his crew for finding out a solution. Um, but I, from what I heard, I, it did hold up against several attacks. And I think that's all that a base can really do. Any base, Town Hall 9 and probably even Town Hall 10, there exists a way to three star it. It's just how easy is that to discover? And I think at Town Hall 9, it's pretty easy. Town Hall 10, a little bit harder. Um, so it's just about trying to defend against a few attacks and hope they don't have enough attacks, uh, the opposing clan, to actually get that 3-star to find the solution. Because for any base, there is a way to 3-star it. Uh, that much, I can assure you guys. So let's take a look at um, what we're doing today. Basically, I'm going to start off with a middle compartment. Um, as always for these videos, I don't have anything planned. I don't have anything drawn out already. Just doing it on my own, uh, off my own, uh, top of my head as I would in any base. Um, sometimes I'll spend more time if I'm actually using it in war. These tend to be more rough uh, kind of approximations, but they are... They tend to be pretty good bases from what I've made so far. So in the core here, we're going to put the uh, CC and the air sweepers. I think that's the most important thing. We'll go ahead and have the air sweepers facing away from each other. Get a little bit more reach on them. And uh, I think we can also put like um, a storage here. Not going to put a ton of uh, defenses in the middle. Um, yeah, I think that's probably... Actually, we can put like a archer tower or something in here. Just to maintain some central point defense. That might be a good idea. And then we'll go ahead and just make a small center compartment just to have the base kind of centered around. So we'll close this off right here. And then from here, we're going to put all the all four air defenses uh, kind of in these areas. So this is kind of a rough estimate. I might move them a little bit, but they're going to be kind of in this formation right here. And uh, yeah, we might have to move things, um, shift them, but we'll do that as needed. Let's go ahead and keep filling stuff in here. So most of the ground stuff is going to go in one spot. I am going to keep one expo on ground only just to get some maximum coverage in this area. I think that's important and it's definitely worth it in my opinion. We'll actually, we'll slide it out. We'll toss the king in behind here and um, move that air defense one closer. And from there, we can probably just go ahead and uh, make a compartment right here. We'll throw a cannon. Uh, over here as well. This actually might resemble the Town Hall 9 base build, uh, the no-fly zones I've done in the past. The principles actually, surprisingly, are pretty similar. You're just adding an Inferno Tower and have to take into account a few other things and um, some different type of attacks than uh, at, we see at Town Hall 9. But for the most part, they're actually pretty similar. So we'll go ahead and make this compartment like so. Um, slide this compartment around and close it off around there. Uh, always we can you know change this stuff as needed. This is just to try to get us started off. Um, we'll make it symmetrical for the most part. Um, that tends to be the easiest way to do it. Um, that way there's not a weak side they can attack from. The whole thing is uh, relatively you know strong or weak. I guess it depends how you look at it. So let's close off this compartment just like we did in the last one. Try to make it the same spot. Nope, one too high. Think that's good. Um, and we'll, we'll have more cannons down here and stuff. Might be a good idea to throw just a few wizard towers or archer towers or something to help out with those air defenses because the queen is going to go up top in uh, this area up here. And I think that's how you typically want to do it. Putting the queen by the air defenses just isn't a good idea at this point in the game, I think. And it's risking too much. Uh, dragons might be too much of an option, especially depending on what level your base is. So uh, we'll probably have some more cannons right around this area. 
The one thing I don't like is how the expo is a little bit exposed. We can go ahead and swap the king out. I think it's more important to protect that expo. And uh, yeah, right like that. That way it gets a lot of coverage in that position. So yeah, that looks good. We can probably move the cannon back like so. We'll go ahead and put it right there. And uh, we can put like a, um, I don't want to slide the air defense back. Let's just put like a, a building right here. Um, add some HP down here and get the another, other cannon over here just like that. Um, move it out up one actually. Cannon up one and then we'll put a storage here. Storage here. Do we have a little bit of a size discrepancy? It looks like we do. I'm not sure if that's something we can remedy or not. You know what? It's fine. I think we'll just kind of go with it. We'll put a builder's hut. Um, just in each little location here and call it good like that. Um, okay, the Inferno Tower is going to go in kind of the top half of the base. Not You don't want them to be too far close to the Queen, uh, but you don't want them to be too close to those air defenses and give up too much. So we'll go ahead and make our own kind of Inferno compartments. We'll put one like uh, right in this area. Should we put it this far down? That might be too risky putting it too far out. Um, we want it to have some kind of central coverage still, so we can probably slide one um, up here and the other up here. At the same time, don't want to put them too close to actual defenses. So that one we might keep closer to the outside. I have to think about this for a second. Um, might have to make a few adjustments on the fly here. Get rid of this archer tower, I'm thinking. Make this core a little bit smaller. I think that's going to be the way to go. And then we can slide this... Um, down because as I see it right now we want to keep the inferno towers kind of on their own but we don't want to push them too far to the outside of the base that won't be good either so let's just um, slide everything in a little bit that's about good um, move this inferno down and move this one right here and uh, yeah it looks pretty solid now we can set up kind of a uh, little buffer around them which is you know this kind of idea was invented a long time ago, having the Inferno in this compartment on its own, ever since mass bowlers. But I think it's held strong, not only to uh, you know prevent bowlers or stuff like that, but to also keep the balloon pathing away. It's hard to path into a building that doesn't have many uh, buildings leading into it. And I think that's a good thing to do. So we want to put some HP right here. I think the Town Hall, just throw that guy right in between them. Really make it difficult to... Uh, bridge that gap and yeah that's going to be a good thing to do then we'll put the queen immediately after right here um, we can probably just start to fill in defenses to a certain extent put expos on either side uh, they can't reach those air defenses which is good we'll put one over here as well maybe like that like that um, we'll go ahead and close off around the queen here give her her own little compartment um, up and over like so. Okay. Um, we'll put, I guess, a wizard tower. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. Wizard tower storage or something like that. We have quite a few walls, um, so we'll just kind of work with what we have. Let's go ahead and make this go pretty far out like so. Um, we can put one going like that, kind of in the Cutting across the middle there, another smaller one like that, and then finally like that. What this is doing, um, by kind of having it very segmented up in this area, this is defending against queen walk and stuff like that because people have been doing queen charges lately to get the uh, the air part of the base taken out and then just coming at the other part. You've seen this on the channel probably with uh, La Lune for these other air defenses, just kind of overpowering the bottom. So this way we're going to prevent the queen walk from being too strong up top. The infernos can also cover most of it. So that's good there. Um, we'll throw an archer tower right here. Archer tower here. Might have to slide things down. Um, yeah. Go ahead and do that now. Uh, move all. One, two, three. That should be good. Okay. Um, archer tower here. Archer tower like that. We'll make these go one farther out. Yeah. Okay. Finish off these compartments. Put some storages uh, up in this area. Storage, storage. 
Um, we can also throw our wizard towers up here as well. Like that. Looks pretty good. Um, then we want to have compartments protecting these inferno guys a little bit. So we can make one like that. And we can actually protect that expo a little bit better. Maybe even have that go farther out actually. To right there. That should protect that expo pretty well. But yeah, that should prevent it from being targeted I think. Um, similar up here. Across to about right here. And we have about 11 walls left over. I have to upgrade those walls. It's kind of annoying me. I have 10 walls left over. Um, this way the Inferno can kind of reach outside there, uh, but the Queen or anything can't reach it from the outside. They actually have to go for it. Um, my concern, I guess, right now is that there could be a jump spell, because sometimes people get kind of cheeky and drop, if they use a Queen Walk on one part, they'll drop in the Jump and the King to get the Inferno. So we definitely want to, you know, guard this area with uh, probably storages if we have any left, otherwise maybe just use some other buildings. Yeah. Oh, no, we do have the DE storage, actually. And we can put a storage right here to kind of help protect the Inferno. Um, but beyond that, keep some solid point defense. Um, we'll put uh, another Archer Tower up here. Actually, right there is good. Keep them relatively central. Don't want to push everything up to the top. Don't want to put all our eggs in one basket, so to speak. Um, so we'll put that there. We want to make sure we really have uh, it covered tight here. So we'll put... We can probably put the bomb towers here. This might be a good spot to put them. Uh, a little more damage. Actually, I have to move that out one. We'll move the archer tower over one. Maybe we can put a spring trap in that area. Um, yeah, that's good. Let's see what else we got here to put down. Archer tower and a cannon. Okay. Um, we have about 11 walls, so we can extend something as needed. Let's see what we want to do here. Okay. Um... I guess what we can do is we can probably move this compartment out a little bit on each side. Just maybe make it go straight across like that. I'm gonna have to get into these level 10 walls, or level 9 walls rather. Um, this one only have to move out one actually, but yeah, like that. Okay. <laughs> this is annoying. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, that's a, roughly the same on either side, not exactly. Um, what we can do is we'll have our mortars probably out around in this area to block some of the pathing for balloons if they come from this area. So we'll keep these here as kind of placeholders, but we'll put some more defenses actually inside the base. Might be a good idea just to have one archer tower down here just to kind of hang out, defend as needed. So we'll do that. We'll get rid of that, move that up, move this archer tower right to there. That way we can put some giant bombs in there if we want. So that looks pretty solid. Um, wizard tower, maybe do that on the other side. Put a whiz tower there. Yeah, they're touching, but I, I typically don't like having defenses touching, but that's, that's fine. Um, it's all good. And then we have a few extra walls to work with. Uh, what should we do with them? I guess we can extend out this direction a little bit. Might as well. I don't see a whole lot of other uses, um, especially for just that few of walls. Can't do a whole lot. So like that. And then same thing over here. Like so. Okay. And then... Yeah, we'll just keep it like that. This will just help protect the expo a little bit better and uh, keep everything a little bit more encased. So the queen looks pretty solid. I'm not seeing a whole lot of stuff they can do here because her range doesn't reach any of those bottom most compartments on the bottom right there. <clears throat> uh, these last three walls kind of do with as we want. We do have one more cannon to, to uh, think about, so that'll probably end up just going like, um, uh, probably like right around where the mortar is instead. Just throw it in there. Or we could put it up top just to have another point defense. That might be a better idea. Um, don't want to you know, put all our cannons in the same area. So we'll move that cannon up over here, actually. Get that out real quick. It'll probably just hang out somewhere up here. The archer towers can kind of protect it a little bit. So that's all good. 
and um, as far as the Teslas go, now we have a bit of a choice here as far as what to do with them. Typically, even at Town Hall 10, I recommend the Troll Tesla. I'm going to go ahead and use one. I recommend it for Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10. Town Hall 9 especially, but Town Hall 10 also a good use there. Um, this bay is actually kind of anti-2, so some people are always uh, ask me for anti-2 star bases. Here's one, I guess, that's anti-2 and anti-3. Town Hall is in the middle, technically. This is almost a Town Hall 11 base in a weird way. Um, but it's a pretty good Town Hall 10 base. The Town Hall is just here to be a buffer, kind of uh, more HP in between those Infernos. So, yeah. Um, these Teslas, though, we have some options. Um, I typically don't like putting them by the Infernos because that allows people to get good value on their freezes if they use them there or stuff like that. So, typically, I like them kind of on the outside of the base. We could put one there, maybe one there um, and put them at the bottom here, too. I don't know, just like one right here, kind of outside, and just put them between buildings, obviously. Have lots of spaces so it's not obvious, and just throw them between two buildings at one point. I'm not going to put in all the trash buildings, obviously, but that's kind of how you would do it. Three walls, use them as you want if you're actually using this base. I don't really need them right here, but they could probably extend a compartment or two. Giant bombs, we want to keep some singles, so we'll just put one here. Um, these can get Valks, these can get Hogs. Both of which aren't that common right now, but we do see them occasionally. Um, we can put a giant bomb right here by that wizard tower. Sometimes it's a good idea to put them kind of between a bomb tower and an inferno. If you get some pathing, we'll put one right there and one right there. So this should catch... Um, actually, we can even do that and just put it even farther out. That way, we're more guaranteed to get the explosion. If it's by the Inferno, there's a chance something might shoot the Inferno down while nothing ends up going in that compartment. So putting them here is probably a bit of a more secure, um, reliable spot for them to explode. Spring traps, you know, just same thing with giant bombs. Put them all around the base. We'll put one there. This base actually has a lot of great spring trap locations. We can um, go heavy down here if we want. Uh, let's put three there. Then we'll put... Um, a couple here, one there, and uh, I guess we can just throw the last one down here if we think this is where they're going to come from uh, with like some kind of ground attack or something. Otherwise, you can also just throw them up, up top here. We can maybe, actually, let's do three on each side. We'll put three up here as well and call it good. Uh, move that over one between these two buildings. Typically, though, it's better to put them in the bigger compartments because there's more of a chance troops will go through. Up here, not as much. There might be a troop that shoots over the wall. Doesn't actually go inside the compartment. So let's try to wrap this up here with the last few defenses, or last few traps, rather. Um, these guys, we want to typically throw them, um, at least have one on each side down here, cover these main air defenses, then put the others up here to defend dragons and whatnot. We can put this one over here and kind of just cover the corners of the base over here. Because um, really, if they're using an air attack, air is typically going to go through this area. I don't think it's that easy to queen walk this base, just taking a look at it at the top there. And because of that, I think um, we're most likely to see some kind of air at least go through that area if we do see air at all. Um, but really, it's your choice if you're going to use a base similar to this. These red bombs, just put them, <clears throat> uh, typically uh, put most of them up towards the top here. You can maybe have one or two by the actual air defenses. If you feel it's necessary, maybe put one out here. If they try to drop in a few sneaky balloons, <clears throat> like if this cannon was exposed. I don't think it is. I think it's covered. Yeah, looks pretty covered. But if it wasn't... Um, you can throw that there to try to take out some balloons or something like that. Lastly, let's put these traps in. Really, I, th I can see it either way. I think maybe it might be more effective to do air skeletons at this point right now because um, the balloons can't fight back. The air troop or the ground troops typically will, Valks, Bowlers, whatever. We don't see hogs very much. So typically, whatever the air skellies trigger will fight back at them. But the balloons, the lava hounds, um, they don't fight back. So. That might be a good reason to put these guys on air. I might put, you know, I don't know, maybe two here. Take a risk, put two here, um, and then put one up here. I don't know. Just just thinking out loud. Um, I don't have all the answers, of course. We'll just go ahead and do it like that. And then the single bombs, just throw, in the, throw them in by the giant bombs, probably. 
I don't see any other good spots for them. So we'll just put um, like three by each giant bomb just to intensify the blast a little bit. Maybe kill some bowlers um, or kill some witches because the giant bombs currently don't quite do that, I believe. But I think we covered everything. A few extra walls. Like I said, guys, feel free to uh, to kind of take some of the ideas from this base. You can copy it, of course. Not sure how well it'll hold up. I think it's a pretty solid base here. And hopefully you guys learned a thing or two as well from this video. So thanks for watching. You know, I'm going to continue the series because I know it's a popular series that you guys enjoy watching. Try to do it for the different town hall levels. And uh, yeah, so I'll be coming out with some more content over the weekend, hopefully trying to cover some live action if I can. So be looking forward to that, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisect the Toronto.